On the night of August 9, 1942, the United States Navy suffered one of its worst defeats. Three heavy cruisers sent to the bottom in one engagement, with no damage of note done in turn to the Japanese fleet. That was the Battle of Savo Island. Over the intervening years, all three American cruisers and HMAS Canberra have been located. Their wrecks are in as bad of shape as you could expect, although it varies between ships. Today we will be looking at the wreck of USS Vincennes, probably the least famous of the three. Quincy has her sinking picture and was the first wreck found. Astoria has her bow on top of her stern. Vincennes gets less attention in general. That said, there will be more pictures this time in comparison to the last couple videos. As is tradition, however, let's briefly look at her sinking first. As I said at the start, Vincennes was sunk at the Battle of Savo Island. This began at the very end of the night on August 8th, 1942, and ranged into the early hours of August 9th. Vincennes, in specific, began her struggle to survive at around 1.55 a.m. on the 9th. The cruiser was illuminated by Japanese searchlights, which just gave a target to fire back at. Vincennes opened fire almost immediately. Unfortunately for her, this also helped the Japanese fire back. It didn't take long for the shells to start slamming home. Vincennes was hit early on, within a minute after the searchlights illuminated her. The bridge suffered particularly badly, with multiple shells hitting it. Another set of hits wrecked the hangar area, setting fires that the crew couldn't put out. Those would spread, while more shells struck home. Vincent still struggled along at around 20 knots, turning to starboard in an attempt to escape. This one had happened as a torpedo, or perhaps two, struck around the number one fire room. That put the area out of action, which did not help matters. Unsurprisingly, within a few more minutes, the cruiser lost her steering control. Now dead in the water, Vincent's continued to be fired upon by the Japanese. Her own ability to fire back was worn down until the final guns fell silent. The battered cruiser was left alone, around 2.10 in the morning, with an increasing list to port. With the fires raging out of control and the list getting worse by the minute, the order to abandon ship went out at 2.30. By 2.50, USS Vincennes rolled over and sank. Not even an hour after the initial attack, and the cruiser was gone. 322 of her crew went down with the ship. During the battle, the cruiser suffered at least 50 hits, although a more common number is 57. The damage plate seen here is illuminating in this regard. Regardless, this is where the story of USS Vincennes came to an end. Until, that is, 2015. The wreck of the cruiser would be located that year on one of the earliest expeditions by Paul Allen's team of shipwreck hunters. Just like Astoria, this was so early that RV Petrol hadn't been acquired yet. This expedition was performed from Allen's yacht, Octopus. In any case, the wreck was located in January of 2015. Vincent's rests at a depth of a little over 1,000 meters, or 3,280 feet. Let's look at that wreck now. I'll note, before I move on, that there's no sonar imagery I've been able to find. So we'll focus on the wreck itself, beginning with the weaponry, and then the hull. To start, we have one of the main battery turrets. As a New Orleans-class cruiser, Vincennes carried three such turrets, each equipped with three 8-inch, 203mm guns. I'm uncertain of which turret this is, although I believe it's one of the two bow turrets. As the cruiser rests at a relatively shallow depth, this is quite rusty. Rusticles cover the barrels completely, with some dripping from the front of the guns. Behind the barrels, there's a mess of twisted debris. It's almost impossible to make out what it actually is, between the lack of focus and identifying features. I can make out a porthole here, or what seems to be one. However, the rest of it is pretty broken up. There might be some wiring or piping here, but I'm not sure. Probably the most interesting part in this case is the fact that there's some debris resting on top of the turret. It's out of focus, so I can't say much more than that. The next shot has that turret in the background, but a different one is the focus here. 
This is, I believe, the number one turret, with the other one being the number two turret. After all, Petrol's Facebook mentions the bow fell off and landed on its side. Looking at the base of the turret, it does look like the ship broke apart in this area. That would match with this being the number one turret. Regardless, there's not much more detail to make out here. Although it seems like this one is also buried in wreckage. The ship is clearly pretty broken up around these turrets. That does leave just one main battery turret, which is distinctly not covered in debris. The barrels seem to have fallen down in their mountings, and the turret is heavily corroded. But, unlike the other two, you can actually see the shape of it, along with a shell hole right through the side at the top. Interestingly, considering the rest of the damage, the ladder on the side is completely intact. I would have expected that to be shot away or rusted out, but it isn't. That said, with nothing else to look at, let's move on. The next picture shows one of the 5-inch guns. Vincent's carried 8 such weapons when she sank. In comparison to the previous images, this area of the ship is almost pristine. There's no big piles of debris, and the gun, along with its splinter shield, is pretty much intact. This would have been around the funnels, directly amidships. Moving on from there, we have another 5-inch gun. The last one was pointing up, while this one is pointing out over the side of the ship. It might have been used during the battle, and has been stuck there ever since. It's also a bit more intact than the last one, with more of the mount visible. Even the railing on the side is still there. The area around it, meanwhile, is better lit. The splinter shield is pretty similar to the previous mount, while behind it we can see the hull. I think this is the base of the bridge, as a pair of the guns were mounted up there. The bridge detached and fell away during the sinking, which would explain the empty space, as well as the structure left behind. However, with that covered, we're done with the heavier weaponry. There are two pictures of weapons left, both dedicated anti-aircraft guns. First, a pair of 20mm cannon. These were mounted around the aft fire control director, above the stern turret. That director was shot away during Savo Island, but the guns remain in place with their splinter shield. The most notable thing about them, rust aside, is that both remain flat. These are typically angled up as the ships sink, and I'm a bit surprised it isn't the case here. Also, the one on the right still has its magazine in place. That is also fairly rare. However, the last weapon is probably the most interesting. This is a quad 1.1 inch mount, and it's gun tub. The Chicago Piano, as it was nicknamed, is resting on its side. You can see here where these weapons were mounted on the surface, right next to the bridge, with the exception of a couple on the stern. With that rounding off the weaponry though, I'll move on to the hull, starting here with a spare anchor still lashed to the ship. Whoever did the job there did it well, because in spite of the violence of this sinking, it remains firmly in place even with the door next to it blown off its hinges and barely holding on. Another interesting thing with this picture is the condition of the deck. In spite of both the fires and the general corrosion, the deck planking is actually remarkably intact, to the point of making out individual planks, and where this arrow is pointing, what looks like burnt wood. You wouldn't expect to see this kind of preservation on a wreck that is this relatively shallow. The next picture has similar levels of preservation, with intact portholes right next to a shell hole, along with more visible decking. That said, the shell holes in the superstructure are much more rusted out, probably because it's thinner steel. As for the area, this is most likely around the 5-inch gun mounts, probably right beneath the number 1 mount, which is on a higher level. There's also a box of some kind right here. The next picture is a closer in shot, which does mean there's less identifying features. That's fine though, because the focus is here, an exit hole from a shell that passed clean through the cruiser. The way the metal is bowed out like that matches an exit more than an impact, which does speak to how close the engagement was, considering a clean through the entire ship shot isn't exactly common. Now for the next picture. This is part of the debris field, 
It's pretty broken up, all things being equal, but there are a couple recognizable bits. Most notably, two bells. One here, and one here. It might be the remnants of one or more of the cruiser's boats. Hard to say for sure, however. For now, back to Vincennes herself. Here we have the ship's anchor, still attached to the bow. While the rusting is more heavy than on a deeper wreck, you can still faintly make out the writing on the anchor. The manufacturer's markings. There's also a line to the side here, which seems to still be clipped in place. I'm more impressed by that than the condition of the anchor, to be honest. Anchors generally hold up well on these wrecks. Clips like that, on the other hand, are something I haven't seen before. The rest of the bow, meanwhile, is mostly out of focus. It's about what you'd expect from what we can see. Rusty, with bits of paint peeking through. Any damage isn't visible, although it is clear that the bow is on its side in this picture. The next one, for its part, moves back from the bow, to give us an excellent look at the similarly sideways bridge, which is actually pretty well preserved for all of the damage it took. This area, going back to the damage plate, was severely shot up during Salvo Island, and then fell clean off during the sinking. And yet, you can make out all the features of the bridge on the surface. A gun tub here for the 1.1 inch cannon, and what looked to be the bridge windows here. Although it does seem that most of the battle damage is buried or out of frame. Still, this is quite intact, all things considered. The same can be said for the next bit of debris as well. While not as pretty as the bridge, the catapult is also recognizable. In typical fashion, it fell off its mounting and the ship itself, landing in the mud nearby. In spite of that, the frame is still there, and there's no major damage to it. Although, the only difference from other wrecks is the debris on and around it. So, I'll leave it there, and look at the last two pictures. First, the port side propeller, or screw. This is buried pretty deeply, with one blade completely covered, as well as most of the shaft, for that matter. In addition, the cone at the end shows implosion damage, either due to the depth or a fast sinking. Not much else to see, however, with the hull out of focus. As such, that just leaves the last picture, the very stern of the ship with a massive shell hole. Vincent's was shot from stem to stern, and this demonstrates that perfectly. No part of this ship was spared. Also, while faint, you can still make out some of the camouflage pattern. Not very well, but it is there. Although, that does bring us to the end of the video. There might be more pictures floating around somewhere, but this is the last I could find. It seemed a fitting place to end, focused on just how badly shot up this cruiser was. She went down fighting, that's for sure. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.